Hi, everyone. So welcome to the first panel discussion uh, for the OER Rangers. We're going to talk about accessibility uh, today. And to be honest, I think it will be more of a lightning round because we have three amazing people here to discuss their experience uh, with the OER Rangers, with OER in general, and also with accessibility. And we only have 30 minutes for each session. And probably it's my fault because I was just so excited to have as many people as possible here sharing their experience. But first, let's do the land acknowledgement here. Uh, so the offices of eCampus Ontario located in downtown Toronto are within the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And I live in Niagara on the Lake, which is also uh, the traditional territory of many nations, including the Anishinaabeg and the Haudenosaunee. And that is all. So I don't want to uh, take too much time just presenting here, but I wanted to first talk a little bit about the OER Rangers. As some of you may know, the OER Rangers program started in September 20, 2023, and it's run by eCampus Ontario's Open Library. And we had over 200 applicants, which was amazing. We had 49 institutions um, applying for, to participate in this program. And right now we have 80 participants from 47 colleges, universities, and indigenous institutes uh, participating. So the OER Rangers program aims to raise awareness of OER by uh, capacity building and by providing uh, professional developments. And the Rangers underwent training with the Mastering Open Ed training modules, which was a guide to OER created by eCampus Ontario with an amazing team of subject matter experts from Ontario's colleges and universities. Let me just share a link to that here. There you go. If you want to look into the, the press books, uh, we have a version in English and in uh, French as well. And uh, one thing that I wanted to uh, mention as well is that the Open Library is now having a survey to learn more about your ideas and your opinions about the services we provide and everything to do with the, the Open Library. I'm going to post this link here as well for the survey. Any minute now. There you go. And uh, I believe that the first the first 100 people who participate in it uh, will receive a $25 gift card. So try and be one of those. And also this is the first of many events that we're going to be um, attend we're going to be having during the open education week. And so you can go over to our events page and you can see more events that we're going to have. After we finish this one on accessibility, we're going to have another panel discussion on a collaboration as well. And there are more things going on today, tomorrow and Thursday as well. So go over there and check out all the, the events we have. And so I, I don't wanna say anything else. I just wanna say, introduce our uh, panelists today. We have three amazing rangers with us. We have Greg Gagnon from Mohawk College. We have Julie Sullivan from Loyalist College. And last but definitely not the least, uh, Lyle Williams, uh, who's from Centennial College. And so we're going to have three questions uh, asked them. Uh, but if you do have other questions as well, please post them in the chat. And we're going to see whether we can fit them uh, into our session. So we're going to start uh, right now. Let, let's start in uh, alphabetical order. First, and we're going to have Greg, Julie, and then Lyle, and then we're going to switch it up a little bit. So Greg, you can start, but also I wanna hear from Julie and Lyle afterwards. So the first question is uh, to briefly introduce yourself and tell us about your journey as an OER ranger and how accessibility factor into your experience in the program. Uh, how were the two of them connected to you? 
Awesome. Thank you. So yeah, my name is Greg Gagnon. I am the Accessible Learning Services Technician at Mohawk College. I work directly with students um, with accessibility needs on a daily basis. So this this program really uh, kind of hit me close to heart and so, as well as the accessibility of it and the, that piece having um, open and equal access to content day one uh, was kind of a huge thing for me. Um, and also making sure that like we're removing barriers to access, right? Barriers to accessibility, increasing those things so that students can participate more on a, on a level basis. Um, and my experience through the program has been great. Um, I did a presentation with uh, John Core in December to several individuals at the college about what OER is and how we can use it to, to provide better services to our students. Thank you. Julie, do you want to answer as well? Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so Julie Sullivan, I'm a senior learning technology facilitator uh, here in the Center for Leadership Learning and Academic Excellence at Loyalist College and currently a part-time professor. So my interest began actually several years ago. Our college had an OER open working group. Uh, so we've been interested in open for quite some time. We have an OER fellow with us, so lots of interest, um, but the organization, uh, the institution also has a lot of interest in OER. So we had sponsored this working group. Um, following tests the other year, they had a great booth on um, reviewing OER open resources and textbooks. So I did a review uh, for that. It was a really great experience to sort of get a baseline. And then, uh, in this program as an OER ranger, I really did enjoy the accessibility module. I thought I had a baseline of accessibility knowledge, which I did, but I took a number of really key learnings uh, from the course and was able to apply that directly to my work. So my work is a lot working with faculty and um, looking at how to build um, content and materials that are going to be accessible. So it was uh, directly impactful to my work. And recently I shared that with my broader team on some of my key learnings uh, from the module. I guess I should mention too, from the module, I was also then had the opportunity to do an accessibility review of a textbook uh, for one of the virtual learning strategy uh, texts. So I was able to take that learning from the module and apply it directly uh, to that project where I was reviewing an open educational text. Uh, just a plug for the open library. If you do have any questions, Siri, everyone's wonderful. Um, there's a Slack channel with support for the press books. So there's lots of support if you are looking to um, do some more work in this area. Yeah. Thanks, and Leo? Yeah, thanks, Leo. You know, as the last of three brothers, I'm, I'm used to being at the tail <laughs> end of, of everything in life. Um, my name is Lyle Williams. I work in accessibility services at Centennial College. And, you know, I've had the pleasure of supporting students with disabilities for approaching 23 years now. And it's been a, a phenomenal journey to sort of witness accessibility grow over these decades. <coughs> now, I say that acknowledging that it hasn't been entirely accessible. You know, we've had lots of paper-based testing and we've had invigilation platforms that don't support adaptive technology. But a big part of why I've seen the progress is related to educators, right? And the perspective professors take in their approach to making an inclusive and supportive classroom. Um, when, when we build these environments, you know, we design it in a way that it becomes transformative for students with disabilities. Uh, I think, you know, many times as educators, we might approach accessibility with a little bit of fear and trepidation because it might seem overwhelming, but for every bit of concern and challenge, it's equally matched by the amount of support that exists. Case in point, eCampus Ontario and the support that we've received as rangers and that's available to, to educators out there. The beauty of OER is that it's ultimately accessible from the foundation. The platforms are accessible, you know, not perfectly accessible, but they're still very accessible. Um, and that makes the difference for many of our students, you know, from a financial perspective and from an access perspective. Um, you know, I, I think we, we want to design content in a way where it is engaging, inclusive, 
supportive for as many of our students as possible. And I really, you know, entering into this journey, I was a little bit unsure of what OER meant and could do. And coming out of it, I'm blown away by the potential of this resource. So um, I drink the Kool-Aid happily. <laughs> Thanks for, for the great uh, answers here. Uh, now let's, we're gonna switch a little bit and we're going to have Julie then Lyle and Greg uh, will come uh, last. Uh, this one is the next question based on your experience. How does enhancing accessibility in OER impact learning engagements and success? Uh, in a certain way, you already uh, discussed a little bit of that, but please do expand a little. And can you share an example where improved accessibility made a significant uh, difference? So Julie can start. Great, sure. So I had sort of two thoughts um, when reading through this question. Um, one in terms of engagement. So we do know that you know, students are able to engage with the material more fully. Um, they may have diverse needs and they can engage with the content. Um, we talked about closed captioning. So that's one of the, the clear, so transcripts, closed captioning, things on video, really helpful. Um, tying it to question one, one of the key takeaways I had uh, when I was reviewing the textbook at, that I learned from the module uh, was in relation to when we're doing a video, has the video explained all of the charts or images on a screen in the um, auditory part of the video? And so the, one of the videos I reviewed uh, flashed up a list and it was like seven uh, categories. And the title of that was listed in the video, but not the seven categories. So being aware of the fact that that's not discussed in the video, we have to go back and look at the content and need to make sure that all learners have access to that content. So that was a, a key learning that I hadn't had from other accessibility um, trainings. Um, the second one, I think a lot of us are interested in equity, diversity and inclusion. And we know just this really fosters uh, inclusion when we talk about open educational resources. Um, and it really kind of creates a positive learning environment. Um, valuing and supporting all contributions. That's great. Thank you, Lyle. Yeah, you know, simply put, OER brings learning to life. Learners are not challenged to read static, costly, inaccessible textbooks. They're exposed to rich, engaging resources that align with their learning modalities, that align with their accessibility needs. You know, I'm sure many of you can remember struggling through chapters in textbooks that we learned in decades in the past, you know, looking at figures and charts and illustrations on paper-based content. Now students have links to podcasts and videos and H5P quizzes to pique their engagement and to test what they're learning and their knowledge. And this, this creates a foundation for engagement and learning, which dare I say, makes it fun, right? It makes an entirely different experience. I think OER makes that difference. I've been in this field long enough to witness students have to wait for their books to read them. Um, books that were produced on tape cassettes. I'm old. Um, for books to be scanned on a photocopier and digitized. Uh, digitized in a raw text way where it's not even indexed or formatted for reading. Um, and, you know, more recently, we've seen a lot of sort of digital rights managed publisher produced content which makes accessing content with screen readers or adaptive technology almost impossible for our learners. And OER removes that, right? OER allows access. It provides a landscape that's not um, restrictive for students. Uh, so, you know, we see this in the forms of like press books as an example, right? The press book that Leo posted up, right? That's an entirely different experience for a student to use with adaptive technology than it would have been in a conventional textbook or in a publisher produced DRM textbook. So um, yeah, OER, phenomenal, phenomenal. Thank you very much, Lyle. And now Greg, please. Okay, so I don't quite know how to follow all that, <laughs> but I'll give it my best. Um, so yeah, the, the accessibility of OER is huge. I mean, it, it breaks down that barrier to access from a financial standpoint where students may not be able to afford their textbooks, may or bookstores and stores run out of textbooks. Uh, this, this bridges that gap. 
Um, I will I will shout out John once again um, because John has the only OER textbook at Mohawk College, uh, which has benefited all of our communication students. Um, usually, our communication textbook we would have to request an alternative format for students, and based on you know timelines and stuff like that, it could take a little bit. Uh, but this textbook, I had students coming in saying, you know, I don't know how to access my textbook. And when we look at it, it's like, there's all these formats. You can download it in PDF. You can do this. You can do it online, like whatever works for you. And they were like, oh my God, this is so much better. It's so much easier. And I didn't have to pay for it. And I was like, right. So there's a huge impact to our, to our students, to our, our learners and the engagement in their courses. Uh, the different pieces that OERs can provide, more interactivity, more engagement in just the, the material itself. Um, from more of a faculty or teaching standpoint, this also allows us to pull from different areas. We're not relying on just, uh, you know, one textbook with their one, one view on everything. We can actually pick and choose and create dynamic information, dynamic resources we're teaching our students for the future. And those things can grow and change as we teach them, as things change in the industries, as we, as we grow and evolve. Um, so I guess that's kind of where the accessibility has made a significant difference, uh, is just, just seeing the reactions of the students to the, the OER that's being used in our, in our, in our college, uh, which I'm, I'm hoping grows significantly uh, as we're more exposed to it. Um, yeah, making things accessible increases, you know, inclusivity in so many ways. And we can't forget that. And, and it's, I'm not going to say it's our responsibility to, to teach our colleagues or to inform our colleagues. But we're also we're advocates. Uh, the Rangers program is a is kind of an advocacy program, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're we're advocate, advocating for the adoption of this kind of program for this kind of mentality. So I think those uh, those are kind of the impacts that I see, and the the enhancements on accessibility. Thanks, thanks, Greg, and thanks for all the the great answers. Uh, it was uh, one interesting thing that you mentioned there about the impact in general, and especially <laughs> you mentioned uh, John Core's uh, yes. book. As well, and you can see uh, how much, how many people ha has been already uh, touched by that, and how um, how much savings we have uh, created on that. So, um, from the open library part, we we do have an impact uh, calculator that you can go through, and we have for the the whole um, province right now, we have over twenty two million dollars uh, saved for uh, around 250,000 learners. So it's a huge impact that we, we create and this is accessibility in many ways that we can tackle. But yeah, thank you so much for the amazing um, responses. Uh, now for the last question, we're going to start with Lyle and then um, Greg and Julie. Uh, looking forward, uh, what do you see as the most critical steps or innovations needed to advance accessibility in OER? How can institutions, creators, and the wider educational community contribute to these efforts? Yeah, you know, I, I imagine the audience here is the choir. Um, I imagine the audience here gets it. Uh, so I'm going to tell you things you probably know. Uh, OER is UDL. It's necessary for some, but it's beneficial for all. And uh, not just students with disabilities, right? This is designed in a way where it engages people, as mentioned in some of the previous questions. Um, there's an advocacy piece here for our institutions to build with accessibility from the start. <laughs> you know, many of us are guilty, dare I say complicit, in how we don't address accessibility issues. We, we treat them as an afterthought, whereas utilizing OER changes that perspective. Um, I think we need to be intentional about designing and developing and onboarding and purchasing solutions that are accessible from the get-go. We wanna promote the adoption of accessible technology. So not just from an OER perspective, writ large across everything that we do. I think particularly OER gets at this challenge, but conceptually, um, policy-wise, procedure-wise, we wanna ensure that we're building um, and onboarding solutions that do support the needs of all of our learners, staff, and of course, our students. There's a big piece around training and awareness. Um, I think we, we're so in, in, 
involved in OER that sometimes we forget maybe some of the laggards or people who are not yet on board with this. And so bringing awareness to the benefits might help move and progress some of these people and then providing ample amounts of training to transition. It might be easy for us now, but at one point we had no idea what how to spell OER. And so I think training and awareness are key. Um, and then we want to foster a community of involvement around OER um, internally in our institution. So we have, um, well, not rangers, but like we have ambassadors for OER that we can tap into at our institutions and ask questions to and connect with, not to exhaust them, but just as a resource that we, we can use for support. And then most importantly, we have to share. <laughs> That's a big part of um, OER, sharing what we do, share the innovation, share the work. And, you know, the, the library, the um, open library is a great resource for that. And then among many of the other databases and systems that exist across North America and beyond to sort of share the work that we do in our respective institutions. So, so those are some of the points that I wanted to flag. Thank you, Lyle. Greg? Yeah, uh, I echo a lot of those comments as well. Um, looking forward, I think some of the most critical steps that OER in general can take is to, regarding accessibility, is to keep up with or be progressive as things in the accessibility world change, as things in the uh, world of access changes, to keep on top or ahead of those. Um, for institutions, so this is this is part of what I've been working on with uh, with my institution is it's about the informing, the training, the socializing of accessibility, accessible content, assistive technology. Um, so making sure that we can actually empower our students and our staff in the information with UDL, with OER, with accessibility, and make them like the owners of their content, right? Making them realize that, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be just one way, it can be whatever way we want it to be. And as we socialize these things, they become more, uh, less of an afterthought. Uh, and, you know, remediation of things is extremely hard, especially textbooks, right? Like, if we do it from the ground up, we're making things accessible from day one or as accessible as we can for what we have now. Um, and again, staying ahead or in line with trends that are happening in industries in especially the accessibility fields, right? Like things are always changing. So um, I think that our institutions uh, can do better to provide this kind of service to our students. Uh, I know OER has been around for, for a long time, but Sometimes it takes, you know, years and years to move uh, things forward in these kind of initiatives. But I hope that with these, with programs like this, with more advocacy, with more um, inclusion of uh, faculty, staff, administration to adopting these things, we can slowly uh, reduce or eliminate whatever barriers we can. Thanks, Greg. Uh, now, Julie. Right, sure. So yes, the education was my number one as well. But knowing we've talked about that, I think, uh, secondly, one of the things we didn't talk about specifically, um, in terms of institutional support is now uh, across some of the institution, we're seeing innovative things like grants and swift time for faculty to actually mm -hmm. build some of the OERs and build up this library, um, so that faculty can then find resources they need. So I think uh, continued support from institutions around this idea of grants and faculty support in terms of swift time to build up uh, the resources uh, is an innovative idea. Uh, and lastly, I think one thing we didn't touch on is our technologies uh, coming from that perspective in terms of what can our learning management systems do to support um, making sure that our OER and our um, teaching materials are accessible. And so some of them, like Canvas that we use, has an accessibility checker built right in to the technologies. But that brings us back to this idea of educating and supporting faculty and sort of learning and maximizing that technology. And my last point would be then that institutions could be working with vendors mm -hmm. to ensure that we continue to build robust accessibility functionality within those technologies. 
Right. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, everyone, so much for your amazing answers. And one thing that, that you got me thinking was about the idea of um, accessibility, accessibility to remove barriers and how it's now seen as uh, actually a wrong way to see it because it's it's more there shouldn't be any barriers in terms of accessibility. So we are imposing barriers in the moment that we're not developing these materials in the, the most accessible way. So it's uh, it's great to see uh, your work and your efforts in this sense. And we're trying to as much as possible to uh, raise awareness to the idea of accessibility and especially within uh, open educational resources. Uh, Dr. Willison in the chat actually mentioned about the idea that hospitals uh, have uh, interprofessional education offices and that maybe we should have the same with OER and uh, institutions, um, post-secondary institutions. And it's something that we're trying to achieve uh, with the OER Rangers, having those champions in each one of these institutions. Uh, but uh, like uh, I always say to anyone who knows me, is that each institution works in a completely different way and is a different place in the journey. So it's amazing how you see some some uh, places, like especially the ones uh, here for Loyalist, Mohawk, and uh, Centennial, how advanced it is, but we, there's a lot more work to be done within these institutions, but especially around the uh, province in terms of getting all the other post-secondary institutions up there as well at the same uh, place as they are. And we do have one question in the Q&A, Q but I don't think we have enough time to say, Phil, I'm going to send the, the question to the panelists so that they can uh, send you uh, the answer as well, if possible. Uh, because right now in, at 12.30, in exactly one minute, we're starting with the collaboration panel discussion. And so if you want to go over, if you are not yet registered, you can go over to the Open Education uh, Week events page over at the Open Library and you can register and meet us there in a minute. So I just wanted to thank you everyone for being here and I hope you have an amazing uh, afternoon. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Greg and Lyle for, for the amazing answers as well. Everyone have a great afternoon. See ya. Thank you.